And that really was the start of it, to try and be able to see if we can make it easier for a person to speak with their hands. Um, so basically this one here is controlling the vowel space and as you close, uh, as you close the hand, it creates voiced consonants. And then this and this this hand here is doing the stops. Bob had the uh, the idea and the insight to say, well, hey, we could make this into something that focuses a much more on the expressive side and make it more of a musical um, experience. That led to the developments up till today, which was really developing the technology a little bit further, uh, developing a repertoire for it, developing how the particular style of speaking and, and sounds that it makes can be used in an expressive manner, not just to talk, which is what my original goals were. Uh, all that came together to uh, allow us to actually create what we have today and be and using those in performance settings. From a compositional point of view, what I'm interested in is expanding the tools that are available to provide an emotional experience in the concert hall. Um, so with this, we're, ex we're extrapolating. We're able to give one person two voices. They can sing with this voice and they can sing with this voice. So they can do a duet with themselves or they can express themselves vocally in two different ways. And that's a very, very powerful, uh, a very powerful tool, a very powerful experience. I came in as an electrical engineer master student and um, basically I built a lot of the hardware and software components to basically make the system do what it's supposed to. But personally um, what drew me into the project is my own interest in music, I guess. Jaunty is an accomplished <laughs> classical pianist as well as being a very good electrical engineer. Uh, he is able to cover both sides and he's very valuable on the project because of that. If this was like a purely engineering project by itself, we may have built something that was maybe technically a little bit more advanced than what we have, but then in terms of the applications and the consequences would be much narrower. So being able to work with artists and linguists throughout the process, I feel like the project's a lot richer than... So you have to have an understanding of uh, vocal processes uh, from a physical perspective. You also have to have uh, some understand a lot of understanding, actually, of psychoacoustics and the way we perceive sound. Because when we talk so quickly, our mouths are moving so quickly, our brains track that the mouth is changing the pitch to, or the upper frequencies, they're moving in that direction, but then we move on to the next word and it changes. So it's moving in this way. It, the brain says, I know where you're going and reacts. I know what you're trying to say. You know, the next question really is, well, now that we can talk with a different mechanism besides our, our mouth and our tongue, if we can talk now with this, well, we can actually see all of this. Most of our speech is hidden, but now we can see it. And if I can be articulate and expressive, then I can start to understand speech production much more deeply than I can right now. If you think about what somebody who um, can't hear when they do lip reading, this is, if they could understand what the movements here are, they don't, this is like, it's kind of like lip reading, but it's the entire articulation. So potentially, you, sh you could actually watch somebody's movements here and understand what they're saying without any sound. You can abstract this as a technique that relates hand gestures, hand motion, and this kind of control into another control space. What I'm good at here is mapped to the things that need to be done, say, in a crane interface to make it easier. If we really can make a vocal instrument that works well, that could last centuries. <laughs>